Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. I hope everybody has had a great start to their week and is looking forward to an even better rest of the week and weekend. Students, in this class, we are looking at a speaking part one example with some uh, sample questions and strategies. And uh, of course, uh, as usual, the class is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS help online learning. Check us out at aehelp.com. For general IELTS help, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s help.com. On both of these websites, we have lots and lots of materials for you. Uh, here's a quick look at those websites now. This is the academic one here that I'm loading up for you at aehelp.com with the blue background. You can click these big red buttons to join the premium package and then uh, you will have access to over 100 hours of video lessons, a fully interactive course, and over 100 hours of uh, strategies and videos to watch. Uh, you can use the code R4TYJ to get a 20% uh, discount. So R4TYJ. Hi, Yura. Hi, Pavan. Hi, Bumi. Nice to see many members in the class. Irene Pikachu. Nice to see some of our regular students and new students as well. Uh, General IELTS, same idea. It is uh, with a green background. I'll show that to you here in just a second. It looks like this. Again, you can click these big red buttons to join the premium package. All right. Um, Musksud uh, says material's not clear. It's okay, Musksud. Just showing you kind of the layout of these. So don't worry about it. Um, students, if you have questions uh, about the exam or the products, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, and I will gladly uh, respond to your inquiries as soon as I can. Uh, you can buy our exam books from Amazon. Search for AE Helps Academic IELTS or GE Helps General IELTS for some original practice tests. Okay, everyone. So uh, the live streaming schedule from today until Saturday, it's on the YouTube community board as well. Uh, today, speaking part one. Tomorrow, I'll host a reading class for members. And then uh, we'll start a task two with everyone. We'll finish that on Friday, do a task one with members on Friday. And then uh, on Saturday, a Q&A session for members and a speaking part three session for everyone. Hick Matillo, how did your speaking go? I see your comment there. Did it go okay? How did your speaking test go? What was the topic, Hick Matillo, yesterday in your speaking exam? Let us know. All right, uh, students, again, you can use this code R4TYJ on our websites for a 20% discount. Um, and uh, this is a speaking class, so make sure to speak and repeat. It's great if you're typing into the chat. But again, uh, repeat and speak aloud, okay? I'm Canadian. My accent is West Coast North American. So my accent is what you would hear in Vancouver, Seattle, San Francisco, Los Angeles, these areas of North America. It's a crisp, clear accent, so make sure to repeat. Uh, Hick Matillo says, uh, speaking uh, yesterday was uh, on uh, taking a break, okay, from school, like going on a vacation, something like that, a holiday, Hikmatillo, I'm guessing. All right, everyone, so let's warm up our English speaking muscles uh, with some of these classical, typical icebreaker questions in the IELTS exam. Uh, you go into your exam, most likely the first question that you will hear is what is your full name? So uh, everyone, please answer this question. Try to do it in an original way, okay? If you've said my full name is this, then try to do it in a different way. My first name is, my given name is, my surname is, my family name is, 
lots of different ways to do it. Okay. So give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. What is your full name? I'll give you a sample answer while you're thinking of yours and then uh, I'll read some of them out. So my given name is Charles and my family name is Anderson. Please call me by my nickname, Charlie. Okay. So repeat after me, students. What is your full name? My given name is Charles and my family name is Anderson. Please call me by my nickname, Charlie. All right. I see some other ones there. Uh, Hung Fu channel says... Let's see what Hung Fu Channel says. Lots of responses coming up. My family name is uh, Hung Shin Lavong, and my name is Lath Davan. Okay, and what should I call you, Hung Fu? Uh, make sure you tell me what your nickname is, because usually the examiner will ask you, and what should I call you, especially if you have a difficult name. Uh, Bumi says, my full name is Bumika Chatbar. Please just call me Bumi for short. Uh, Bumi, that's perfect. Okay, so Bumika is your full name, and you like to be called Bumi for short. Bahumi. Okay, great. That's perfect. Uh, Farjana Muni says, I want to contact you for some information. Uh, Farjana, you can uh, send me an email. It's at the beginning of this video. Uh, Preeti says, my full name is Preeti Raman Chandra Yogi, but you can call me as per my first name, Preeti. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, Mao Sam Karki says, my first name is Mao Sam and my family name is Karki. Uh, please just refer to me as Mao Sam. That's good too. Okay, so lots of different ways. Again, practice all of these so you can sound natural and fluent. Okay. Yura says, my given name is Lee Yura, and my family name is Lee. You can just call me Yura. Okay, it's a little bit confusing, Yura. So you have a first name, Lee, and a family name, uh, Lee, or your full name is Lee Yura. Okay, careful not to confuse the examiner on this simple question. It's a bad way to start. All right. Um, one more. Grishma Sharma says, my first name is Grishma and my family name is Nirola. Uh, you can call me Miss Confident for your comfort. Mm, Grishma, I'm not really sure what you mean by you can call me Miss. Uh, miss what? Uh, miss is just a title. We usually add a name to that. Um, or Miss Confident. Oh, I see. It's okay. It's a... It's a joke, Krishma. I get it. Um, yeah, uh, students don't really um, pass off jokes at the beginning of the uh, interview. I don't recommend it. It can be really awkward and jokes can be misunderstood. But I got you, Krishma. Okay, I got it. All right. Um, one more. Lolita says, my full name is Kabut Dinova Mariana. Please call me just Mary for short. Uh, Lolita, you can say, just call me Mary for short because Mary is short for Mariana, right? So you, that's where you can use that for short expression. All right, students, good. The next question always will be, may I see your identification? So may I see your identification? Give me a nice full sentence for this. Yes, certainly. Uh, let me just dig out my passport from my pocket which I used for registration. Here you are. Please take a look. Okay, so um, nice fluent natural response. Repeat after me. 
May I see your identification? Yes, certainly. Let me just dig it out from dig out my passport from my pocket, which I used for registration. Here you are. Please take a look. Let me do that one more time, students. Yes, certainly. Let me just dig out my passport from my pocket, which I used for registration. Here you are. Please take a look. Nice natural adjective clause, uh, which I use for registration, idiomatic expression, dig out my passport. Those are all uh, points that will increase your band score. Okay. All right. So some answers from students. Mausam Karki says, yes, of course, here's my passport, which I used for registration purpose. Sure, that looks good. Uh, Bilbin Shaji says, here's my passport. Please have a look. So usually, uh, uh, Bilbin, we would add a little bit more to that. Like, here's my passport. Please take a look. Okay, or have a look, please. Okay, that's how we would finish it. Raja Manikam says, yes, of course. Please have a look. And of course, you're passing it at that point. Uh, Lee Tran says, my given name is Lee and my family name is Tran. Please call me by my nickname, Alice. That's for the previous question, Lee. Good. Okay, that works. Jazwan says, yes, sure. Here's my passport. Have a look. That's good. Okay, again, practice many, many different ways to say this so that uh, the examiner can feel that you're confident, natural, fluent. Eduardo Lorenzo de Oliveira says, of course you may. Here's my identification, which I used for registration. Nice, Eduardo. Okay, good. Gagandeep Singh says, yes, certainly. Let me just take out my passport from my pocket, which I used for registration purpose. Please have a glance. Nice. I like the word glance. That's exactly what the examiner will do. Okay. And then they should give your uh, identification back to you once they've checked it and checked off the form that they had. And then uh, they will ask you a couple more questions to get to know you better, make you feel comfortable. All right, here we go, students. How did you get to this exam? So they'll say, all right, now we'll ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. How did you get to this exam? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this. Use the question. Okay, how did you get to this exam? Shirojidin Abduholikov says, well, I use two types of public transport. First, a bus, then a taxi. Mm, taxi, public transport, uh, not sure. I'm not sure about that. Um, bus, train, taxi is kind of private. Shirojidin, but yeah, okay, that's arguable. It's a, not a bad answer, Shirojidin, it's good. Uh, Priti Yogi says, well, to be honest, my dad dropped me off for this speaking interview. Nice, uh, Priti, I like your use of phrasal verb, drop me off. Okay, uh, and you might want to add a little bit of quantitative information, Priti, like, uh, well, to be honest, my dro dad dropped me off for this speaking interview about 20 minutes ago, and uh, of course, uh, we took our family car. Okay. Uh, Karen Veer says, I commuted to this exam center by my own vehicle, which is a 2010 black colored Chevrolet Beat, and I use it everywhere I go. It's convenient. Okay, Karen, good. Don't over talk, Karen. Careful. Okay, and it's convenient. Traveling by my own car or by my own vehicle, it's too much, Karen. So don't over speak. Careful. All right. Roshni Kunte says, well, I came to this center by moped on my own. Uh, it's quite convenient um, because uh, I save time and money. Yeah, Roshni, the beginning is very good. Be really, really careful uh, not to overspeak, especially if you're making mistakes. So Roshni, be really careful with the second half of uh, that response, okay? Uh, when you speak a lot, students, only do that if you make sure that you're not going off topic and you're not making grammar mistakes. 
Rajveer Singh says, I drove my motorbike. Um, Rajveer, you don't drive your motorbike, you ride it in English, okay? I rode my motorbike to this uh, exam center and it took me around 20 minutes. Um, we wouldn't, venue is okay, Rajveer, but venue is a little bit awkward for an exam center, all right? So, um, well, I took a bus and then a train uh, for about 45 minutes total to get to this exam center today. I mostly use public transportation to get around as it is convenient and affordable. Okay, and then you want to stop there because we're kind of going off topic here. All right, so uh, repeat after me. How did you get to this exam? Well, I took a bus and then a train for about 45 minutes total to get to this exam center today. I mostly use public transportation to get around as it's convenient and affordable. All right, again, students, make sure to repeat and speak, okay, as much as possible. Don't be shy. That is the magical trick of young, young, small children, three, four-year-old children, is they're not shy. They just speak, 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 whatever's on their mind. They're programmed to speak so that they pick up languages extremely fast at an early age. So learn from our young little toddler friends to be not shy and speak as much as you can. Speak your mind. All right. Uh, next question. How will you go back home? <laughs> okay. Examiners like to be kind of casual for these first few questions to make you feel comfortable. They're easy questions. So how will you go back home? Okay. Buxanova Shaksnoza says, honestly speaking, my husband will take me uh, home after this exam in our new car as it's fast and convenient. Okay, a couple of corrections there. Uh, students, when I'm making corrections, you can always check the time and then uh, refer back or check back on it uh, later. Okay, all right. MD Mizan says, thanks, uh, I will go back home by bus, then a train, uh, at last a rickshaw. Wow, a rickshaw even, that's incredible. Okay. Uh, I Elvis says, I will order an Uber for my ride back home. Okay, that works, sure, why not? Akia says, I think I will grab a taxi or use a ride hailing app to go straight home as the train would be very crowded. And I think I've earned it after such a challenging exam. Right, Akia? Why not finish with that? I think I've earned it after such a challenging exam. Yura says, I will take a bus and uh, transfer at least once. It will take about half an hour to get back to my home. Uh, Yura, you transfer buses, okay? So I will take a bus and then transfer to another one. It will take about an hour to go back home. All right, so um, I think after I'm done here, I will either call or hail a cab to take me back home as I feel that I've deserved this extra bit of luxury after such a challenging exam. All right. So again, students showing you some nice, natural, uh, complex language. Uh, here we go. Uh, repeat after me. So how will you go back home? Answer, I think after I'm done here, I will either call or hail a cab 
to take me back home as I feel that I've deserved this extra bit of luxury after such a challenging exam. Okay. All right. Notice um, this uh, use of uh, correlative conjunction here, the either or. So I'm connecting the verb call and I'm connecting the verb hail. Okay. Of course, call is calling. Hailing is when you hail the cab like this or whistle, <laughs> right? Cab, taxi. So you're hailing, you hail the cab. Okay, and then you explain it. Notice this contraction here, the I have, okay? So this isn't a very long response, but it's definitely a nice, complex, natural uh, response that will get you high band scores. So repeat after me again. I think after I'm done here, I will either call or hail a cab to take me back home as I feel that I've deserved this extra bit of luxury after such a challenging exam. Okay. All right, students. So uh, now we're going to get into part one. So the examiner will say, okay, now I will ask you some more questions on a general uh, topic. Let's talk about books. All right. Now, before we start talking about books, again, a little bit of a tip here. So tip one, Always think answer plus explain plus example. I say it every time and I'll probably say it every single time until I'm a teacher of the IELTS exam, okay? So answer, explain, example. This is what you need to be thinking to get those high band scores. Now, tip number two is uh, correlative conjunctions. are good to use because they make you more expressive and emphasize your ideas, okay? So these conjunctions are your paired conjunctions like both and, not only, but also, okay, uh, either or, whether, or, neither, nor. So use these paired conjunctions. Practice using these in both your speaking and in your task two writing. Notice how I just used it there. So use these paired conjunctions both in your speaking and in your writing. They will help you to increase your band scores. Students often avoid them. They're scared to use them. Don't be. Practice these. They're good. Okay? They make you more expressive. All right. So let's get to talking about books. First question, how often do you read a book? Okay. How often do you read a book? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Answer, explain, example. Maybe a correlative conjunction. Hikmatillo says, I always read a book as it is my most favorite hobby in life. I read genres such as romantic comedy, mystery for about three to four hours a day. In fact, last week I finished reading The Fault in Our Stars. Very good, Hikmatillo. Really nice answer. Hikmatillo's answer includes... The answer, the explanation. What does Hikmatillo do? Reads books frequently. How frequently? Three to four hours a day. And why? Because it's his favorite hobby in life. There's his reason. An example, he just finished reading Fault in Our Stars. Very clear, accurate, high-level response. So good job, Hikmatillo. That's exactly what you want to do. Uh, Begzad Erkinov says... Books are incredible and efficacious. From time to time, I have a look at a book because it enables me to unleash my stress. Hence, instead of watching TV, my horizon is both... is both... escalated and I relax. All right, uh, Begzod, there are definitely a few awkward uses of words there and some grammatical mistakes. So I corrected that a bit. Uh, be careful, okay? Be careful. Practice grammar. 
Um, Maras uh, Baraki says, at least four times in a day I read physics books, either to prepare for a lecture or for the next day. I collect materials for research because not only am I a teacher, but also I'm doing mephil. Not sure what that last word is, Marasa. Careful. All right, let's take a couple more. Rohit Vakhashia says, reading is a good habit and I am a passionate reader. And, reading er and I read every night until I'm drained because I feel satisfaction and it helps me upgrade my knowledge. Rohit, that's good. Just watch your grammar, okay? Make sure again, students, to repeat these corrections. Shireen Fatima says, rarely, because nowadays I'm totally slammed um, with day-to-day -day chores. I need to run from my office back home on time and either cook a meal for myself or complete my pending office work. Okay, Shireen, uh, what is rarely, Shireen? Once every month you read a book? Once every two months? So uh, explain quantitatively when you say rarely, once a year, what is rarely for you to read a book? Rajveer Singh says, I frequently read books, I would say around twice a week. Uh, these are mostly related to both general and technical topics. Just last Saturday, I read a topic about artificial intelligence from a book. Yeah, and then the name of the book, I guess, Rajveer, you just ran out of space. Rajveer, that's a very nice, high-level response, absolutely. Irene Domingo says, I read books twice a week, and one of the books that I've enjoyed is The Rich Dad, Poor Dad book by Robert Kiyosaki. I like this book because it teaches me about financial education. Yeah, Irene, another good book for you that I'm sure you'd love then is The Wealthy Barber. The Wealthy Barber. Okay, uh, those are all good books. They're kind of fundamentals if you're into uh, finance and wealth. Absolutely. So um, I frequently indulge in reading a novel, I would say at least four to five times a week for several hours on each occasion. I'm into books as I love to explore the imagination of authors from around the world. Nowadays, I'm reading War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. All right, great book if any of you have ever Read it? Absolutely. Uh, repeat after me. How often do you read a book? I frequently indulge in reading a novel. I would say at least four to five times a week uh, for several hours on each occasion. I'm into books as I love to explore the imagination of authors from around the world. Nowadays, I'm reading War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. All right, one of the greatest novels ever written, arguably. Let's correct that word. All right. So that's your answer, explanation, example, combination. Okay. All right. You're very welcome, Irene. Yeah, Wealthy Barber. It's a classic. Okay. So uh, next question. Where can you buy books? Where can you buy books? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Where can you buy books? This is one where you should easily use a uh, correlative conjunction. Correlative conjunction, students. For Dov's Nabiev, our member says, I purchased books online and print them at home as it is not only cheaper but also saves me time. In fact, I purchased a fiction book through Amazon just last Saturday. 
Good for Doves. What's the book? Make one up if you don't know. Uh, Harman Preet Kaur says, I have a nearby city library and also a shop named British Bookshop as they have all the ancient as well as latest publications with reasonable prices. Okay, good. Uh, Harman Preet, you can definitely use a correlative conjunction. So not only do I get books at the nearby city library, but also at a shop named British Books. Both of these have um, older and newer titles with reasonable prices. Okay, Harman Preet, that's how I would say that in a even more uh, natural, higher level way. All right. Rafael Andres Guevara says, I bought it in the library, but in the last few days I've started to buy online. Okay, Rafael, use your um, past perfect, present perfect grammar. So I had bought books in the library in the past, but these days I've started to buy them online. Uh, nevertheless, I do like the library experience more. All right, Rafael, not bad, on track. Just careful with your grammar. Akia Athala says, you could get one from a brick or mortar shop, but you can also purchase a book online and get it delivered to your doorstep. For example, I ordered The Stranger by Camus online last week. Uh, Akia, not bad, but Akia, where do you buy books? Not where can I buy books? Okay, that's a different question. So Akia, if the question is where can I buy books, then you can say, oh, you can buy books from a brick or mortar shop or online. But if I ask you where can you buy books, then you should say I can buy books from a brick and mortar shop or purchase them online. Okay, Akia? So be really careful with that pronoun use, you and I. Pay attention to the question, all right? Be very careful with that, students. Okay, um, so uh, these days, not only do I buy books from local secondhand bookshops, but also from online vendors like Amazon. It depends on which title I'm looking for. Uh, luckily, I was able to purchase War and Peace for only a few dollars at Mike's second hand books a couple blocks away. All right. So, uh, repeat after me. Where can you buy books? These days, not only do I buy books from local secondhand bookshops, but also from online vendors like Amazon. It depends on which title I'm looking for. Luckily, I was able to purchase War and Peace for only a few dollars at Mike's secondhand books a couple of blocks away. Okay, notice again the natural use of language. Here, I'm using the not only but also correlative conjunction to emphasize the two elements of online vendors like Amazon and local secondhand bookshops. Okay, so why? Because, well, it depends which title I'm looking for. So where it's available here, title meaning the specific uh, book or novel. Now notice here, students, War and Peace, the book that I uh, finished reading, by Leo, or I'm still reading, by Leo Tolstoy that I said in my previous answer. I'm using this again here, okay? It's very effective uh, for getting high band scores to make these kinds of synergies or connections 
among the information that you're sharing with your examiner. If you can create these connections and synergy, you will have a better band score because one of the key elements that uh, examiners are looking for is what's called cohesion, okay? Cohesion, cohesiveness, uh, for both your speaking and your writing means how well your ideas and information are connected, okay? How well they tie together. And of course, the more they're connected, the more they intertwine, the more sensible your communication. So keep that in mind, okay? I hope that's clear for everyone. All right, uh, one more time, repeat after me. Where can you buy books? These days, not only do I buy books from local secondhand bookshops, but also from online vendors like Amazon. It depends on which title I'm looking for. Luckily, I was able to purchase War and Peace for only a few dollars at Mike's Secondhand Books a couple of blocks away. Okay, uh, here we go. Next question. Which types of books do you like reading? Which types of books? Do you like reading? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Which types of books do you like reading? Uh, Rezvan Zayafar says, I have a lifelong passion for reading romantic novels. These... Let me get back to it. Okay, one more time. Rezvan says, I have a lifelong passion for reading romantic books. These make me feel relaxed. Romantic books give me a sense of peace after a long and tiring day at work. Very good, Rezvan. What kind of a romantic novel are you reading now? Just Want Singh says, mostly I love uh, reading books about technology as I'm an engineering student. I, found, I find them very interesting and practical for my studies. Nowadays, I'm reading a book about power plants. Okay, just one. That's good. That's a good answer. You gave me a nice explanation, example, or sorry, not example, but definitely a good explanation. Oh yeah, in the example, power plant. Very good, just one. It's good. Flower Sun says, uh, novels are a type of book that I usually read most of the time because they always attract me and often, uh, understanding the feelings of characters in situations. Uh, Flower Sun, Novels are books. Books are novels, okay? So uh, oftentimes when we use the word novel, we assume that it means um, a fantasy novel, so fiction, right? Something that's imagined and not real. But that's not necessarily true. Most books can be referred to as novels, okay? There's very, very little difference between the word novel and book, right? So you want to... Think of specific genres of books, Flower Sun. Ravneet Kaur says, my personal preferences for books um, depends on my mood. For instance, if I want to learn about the solar system, I will buy a book named Solar Eclipse by Stephen William Dugsphere. Dugsphere. Um, okay, Ravneet, not bad, not bad. Uh, careful with answers like it depends students, it's usually a good idea to stay away from that phrase, it depends. Instead, just give a clear answer, all right? Okay, let's take a few more here. Uh, Glaniz Iza says, I like to read self-help books as I always want to improve myself in every possible way. Currently, I'm reading this book about Kaizen, a self-help technique from Japan to make myself more productive. Clunny is very good, okay? Make yourself more productive, eh, it's okay. Make myself more productive is better because you're talking about yourself, right? Okay. Uh, Sabir Hossein says, there are various types of books which I love to read, such as motivational, comedy, uh, and romantic novels. Uh, history books I also enjoy. Among them, I prefer to read motivational books the most in my free time. Okay, Sabir, not bad. Uh, students, don't use the word and so on. Uh, that doesn't mean anything for your listener, okay? They can't guess what you mean by and so on, all right? So, <clears throat> uh, 
Let me give you my answer here. My favorite uh, genres uh, when it comes to reading are fiction, uh, fantasy, like War and Peace, as well as sci-fi and history novels. I enjoy imagining alternate realities as this really helps me unwind. I plan to read the new Star Trek novel next week. All right. So here's my answer. Uh, repeat after me. I'll just move this down so we can see it all in one eye shot. Which types of books do you like reading? My favorite genres when it comes to reading are fiction, fantasy, like War and Peace, as well as sci-fi and history novels. I enjoy imagining alternate realities as this really helps me unwind. I plan to read the new Star Trek novel next week. Okay. So again, making that connection. Notice how I've referred back to War and Peace twice now, okay? Using the word genres, when it comes to reading, conditional, real conditional, okay? So showing that complex grammar, that's how you really improve your band scores. Okay, next one. Uh, which types of books do you dislike? Which types of books do you dislike? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Which types of books do you dislike? I'm interested to see what you come up with for this one. Again, make sure to give a reason here. Taral is my love says, I hate books which feature information about writers' lives. Because not only does it me, me, do these make me feel very bored, but it also steals my time, which could be spent on more important matters like my other hobbies. Uh, Tural, good. Don't use the word things. Tural, always find a better word than that. Uh, writers' lives would be plural in that case. So L-I-V-E-S, not F-E-S. Okay. Careful with the spelling on that. Uh, invaluable time. You have a missing word there, Tural. Be careful. Okay. Uh, Ravneet Karul says, uh, choosing a good book is equivalent to choosing a good friend. My least preferred books are usually romantic novels as I am more of a practical person. That's a great answer, Ravneet. Very nice use of vocabulary. I like it. Elena Mori. Good to see you in class, Elena. Another one of our members. Uh, to be honest, I don't like history books. They are not only about facts and figures, but also the incidents are very subjective. I get bored whenever I start reading them. Elena, I couldn't agree more. History books are very subjective a lot of the time. Um, good answer. Again, there's no right or wrong here, students. The answer itself is subjective. Okay. Arafat Islam says, there are various sorts of books which I dislike. For example... Uh, scientific books seem very complicated to me. Uh, often I feel bored reading these kinds of uh, texts. Okay, uh, When it's um, not fiction, so reality books like science books, another way that you can uh, refer to them, students, instead of using the word books, is texts. So T-E-X-T-S, okay? texts, like textbooks. Okay. Uh, Haman Prekur says, actually, I've never thought about that because whenever I read a new interest, it is invoked uh, in that book. Okay, Harman Preet, I kind of get what you're saying, but you need to rephrase that to be clearer. Okay. 
Boomy says, honestly, I don't like history and biography novels because I find that they are dreary and I fall asleep every time. Uh, my best uh, friend gifted me a uh, fight of warrior, which I still didn't complete even the first chapter. Okay, Boomy, not bad. Careful again with grammar. So, um, I don't like reading cooking books because I'm more of an improvisational, I'm more of an improviser uh, when it comes to cooking. Also, I feel that they take up space unnecessarily on the shelves in the home as recipes can be easily and quickly uh, downloaded from the internet. Okay, so uh, here's my answer. Cooking books, cookbook, I just made that up. Um, here we go. Which type of books do you dislike? I don't like reading cooking books because I'm more of an improviser when it comes to cooking. Also, I feel that they take up space unnecessarily on the shelves in the home as recipes can be easily and quickly downloaded from the internet. Maybe uh, it's from my childhood because my mom had lots and lots of cooking books, although I must say she cooked amazing meals throughout my life. So hats off, mom. I love you. Um, all right. So uh, here we go. Uh, repeat after me one more time. Which types of books do you dislike? I don't like reading cooking books because I'm more of an improviser when it comes to cooking. Also, I feel that they take up space unnecessarily on the shelves in the home as recipes can be easily and quickly downloaded from the internet. Okay. So, uh, students, a couple more questions here. What is the next book you plan to read? Where is a good place to read a book? How have reading books changed? Those last three questions I will leave to you for homework. You can record them on your MP, on your phone in MP3 format, and then you can send your answers to my email adrian at aehelp.com and I will gladly give you a band score estimate. Okay. Muhammad Ali, hi. I bought your online computer-based course. Awesome, Muhammad. Make sure to use it every day. Akia, you are very, very welcome. Hikmatillo, you are also very, very welcome. Uh, students, uh, one more time. If you like this lesson and you want to see uh, several HD videos with me for all sections of the IELTS exam with some clear strategies, uh, be sure to check out aehelp.com for academic IELTS help and G-I-E-L-T-S help.com for general. And again, you can use the code R4TYJ to get that 20% discount tomorrow. I will be back uh, with some, uh, ooh, what was it, reading and task two, reading for members and starting a task two question for all students. So be sure to check out those websites. Thanks, Arafat. Thanks, Elena. See you all tomorrow. Much love from Budapest to all of you. Keep up the good work. Bye for now.